Welcome to the world of Asheron's Call. Today, we delve into the fascinating history and culture of the Tumorok, a race of warlike humanoid lizard folk. Before we begin, we must understand the relationship the Tumoroks have to Asheron. A withered tome written by Asheron himself and found in his library was translated by Brett Sulf of Cragstone titled Auris of Ezrin. It reads as follows. As observers, it is ever our first priority to remain unseen, mindful that contact with these races could alter their culture in a way that would be infinitely damaging. To that end, the Collegium Ingefara has devised potent rites cast upon our excursions prior to travel through the portal flux. It has ever been my position to ensure that the weave of the spell does not falter on worlds where the potency of magic is dampened. Since the piercing of our veil on Ezerit, we have redoubled our efforts and implemented new techniques to ensure that we are not seen. Yet I cannot help wondering if what happened on Ezerit has deeper import than we have given credence. Since the discovery of portal travel, there have been experiences felt by myself and others that can only be described as reliving. As though the moments that are playing out before us are predestined or have previously occurred. This predetermination has no bearing or direct correlation to divination, and so I am unwilling to think that these are mere instances that I had seen in a vision, nor are they hallucinations. Azeroth is a moon world capable of supporting several species. Three of these species appear to have better than animal intelligence, capable of crafting rudimentary tools and sustaining a limited form of speech in the lesser of these forms, to the ability to speak in a tongue that we were able to learn quickly through the greater. Perhaps the most interesting of these species were the Tonk, the good-natured creatures that pierced the illusions and fell to their knees in worship of us promptly corrected. These peoples appeared to have seen us before. Several of their structures appeared to be influenced by the architecture, once prominent on Irith Lasso, though certainly more crude and rudimentary. The basis for their art and their understanding of magic as a tribal gift from the gods that sang throughout the cosmos, as they referred to the suns, was also reminiscent of our first steps into grasping magical talents. Yet, there had been no logged instances of travel to Ezerit. Some scholars here at Nor have begun discourse over the possibilities that may have lead to the development of these peoples. Currently, the leading theory falls to Rayam Laeron, a young girl whose family traces roots to Habrus descent. She theorizes that at some future point we shall visit them again, and when we do, we shall have circumvented the principle of moments and traversed to a period before their intelligence was heightened. She believes that we shall spark their growth and open their potential to become the beings that they are after our recent visit to their world. Theoretic magic indeed, but a forward thinking that may one day give rise to a new school of potent magic. Her opposition comes in the form of another, much like herself. Only Yaiv Saidi hails from Yelaine descent and believes that this is an anomaly. Something that is as the stricture of the Northern Church, an accepted universal constant that there are beings that are meant to watch others and guide them through their lives. Hers is also a valid belief that has allowed for much debate amongst the halls of Nor as of late. I, however, have begun to dream a third possible scenario. Our race is seeped in mystery and unknown. The furthest that we can trace our lineage is over 30,000 years prior to this, the Third Age of Lore. We are constantly rediscovering ancient ruins of cultures that time has swallowed or swept away. Perhaps my discovery of planar travel was not a discovery. Perhaps it was a reawakening of a magic that had long slumbered within the world waiting for a time to be used again. If this is the case, then who might have ventured to Ezerit, perhaps to other worlds before we have done so? These answers I hope to learn, and we make future preparations. The next research trip will be led by Delakim. I'll make sure to send both Yaeve and Rayam along, as they can both draw further and perhaps more resolute conclusion by further exposure to the denizens of the world. Though the focus will not be placed upon the Tonk, but on the Banderlings a race to which we will not expose ourselves. I think that it will offer more insight to all three theories. Now that we understand more about the Tumoroks, 
He has continued to discuss them in a more formal way. Standing at an average height of six feet, the Tumorok are not the largest of their kin, but they are by far the most dangerous. With near human intelligence, they have become skilled in the art of warfare, wielding weapons and even using sorcery. However, their true nature is often misunderstood. Once, the Tumoroks enjoyed a peaceful and artistic existence, living in harmony with their surroundings. The young Tumorok long for those days and have joined forces with the Asperians, forsaking their warring kin. The Tumoroks hail from the world of Ezeret, a hot and humid land prone to foul weather. Spread across countless archipelagos, their tribes were separated by long boat journeys. They shared Ezeret with other creatures, such as the Drudges, Bandlings, and Mosswarts. During Asherin's visit to the moon of Ezeret, he discovered intriguing similarities between the Tumorok's art and magical practices and those of the ancient Empyreans. It seems the Tumorok's had a deep connection to the cosmic forces that shaped their world. On the continent of Dereth, the Tumorok's became known to humanity as fearsome raiders, constantly threatening human settlements. Their violent actions, however, were not their true nature. They were once a peaceful and communal culture, relying on unique rituals involving drumming for their magic. Trapped on Dereth, the Tumorok's faced a life-or-death struggle against the offspring of an Ulthoi queen. They found a way to pen in the Ulthoi queen. It developed a distinct culture. With the arrival of the Virendi, cloaked beings of power, their fate took a dark turn. The Virendi discovered the trapped Tumorok's and struck a deadly bargain with Aranpu, an embittered outcast. Aranpu and his followers, the He tribe, were altered to appear more human and became infiltrators. The He's actions bedeviled humans and were guided by their Virindi benefactors. The Tumoroks, or Tonk as they refer to themselves, now dwell in the Dialands, rocky regions they have claimed as their home. They use other humans as slaves and foot soldiers encroaching on human settlements with raids and sieges. The Tumoroks' unique culture revolves around ritual drumming. With their archipelagos separating their tribes, they use drumming to communicate across the water and stay connected during storms. This spiritual practice forms a significant part of their lives. Tumrock names hold great significance, consisting of three parts. Juta name, given name, and title role within the tribe. Female Tumroks gain new names associated with important deeds, while males gain names tied to notable achievement. The Tumroks, once misunderstood as mere raiders, possess a rich history and complex culture. Despite their warlike reputation, their true nature is one of longing for peace and a return to their artistic roots. As we delve deeper into the world of Asheron's Call, we uncover the untold stories of the Tumoroks and their quest for redemption, seeking to reclaim their peaceful existence. Join us next time as we unravel more mysteries from this legendary game.